Hey guys, Kyle here, and today we are continuing the gun tutorial with what makes it a gun, and that is the actual raycast shooting. So what we're going to cover today is just very basic raycasting with uh, your bullet raycasting, and it's going to be pretty quick, but we're just going to get through it. Um, it's, as I said before, a lot of the stuff we've worked on up until this point uh, is stuff that doesn't rely on the raycasting. After this point, the majority of stuff we will be working on are kind of adaptations to the raycasting. So today we're just going to go into the basics of it, assuming that you don't know what raycasting is. And then we're going to kind of work our way up to more complicated raycasting. We probably will not do partial blocks, but I will have a link when that comes up uh, to how to do partial blocks and uh, add that to the pack if you want. Uh, but that is a very complicated topic. Anyways. Let's get right into it. So we're going to go into the shoot folder and we're going to make a new folder and the new folder will be called Raycast. OK, and then we're going to have a start function and then we are going to have a another function called loop. And we're going to open both these files. So right now we have start to start shooting. We have shoot, which says the word shoot. We also have burst, which says the word burst and this one, which says the word burst one. Uh, so what is pretty clear here is we're going to also have to apply this to burst, but let's just apply this to shoot. So instead of saying the word shoot, we're going to run a uh, function and we're going to run a uh, gun colon shoot slash raycast slash start. Okay. And then inside the start, we're going to say raycast, which just lets us know, okay, we're at least trying. And then what we're going to do is we're going to get some gun stats. So inside of our file right here, we have one inside gun that says get stats. And one of the stats we get is going to have to be the uh, distance that the gun can travel. So we're going to have to add a new stat for the range, which will be nice. So inside the Glock, let's go ahead and get add a new stat to this. And the new stat will be... Let's see, where, where do we want to put it? Uh, let's go ahead and put it under uh, shoot namespace and let's do this as range and we'll go range of 20, okay? So then inside get stats, we need to get the stats of stats.shoot.range and shoot.range. And I know it's starting to look crazy because we have a lot of these data gets and stores but it's not that bad because it is grabbing them from storage as I've discussed before. So now inside here, we just have to do scoreboard players operation. And now we need a new scoreboard, which you can already see in the sidebar in my demoing. And that is just going to be a Raycast scoreboard. Again, you can compress a lot of the uh, scoreboards here into the same one. And I really would, but for the sake of this tutorial and for easier understanding for you guys, I am going to, uh, make a new scoreboard called Raycast so you can have all these variables associated with the Raycast in one place that you can look at. So that's why we're making a lot of extra scoreboards. So scoreboard players operation dot ITT Raycast equals dot shoot dot range stats. I believe that's the scoreboard. Uh, let's see. Stats. Yep. Sorry, it's been a little bit. Okay, so Assuming you don't know what raycasting is, the principle of raycasting is essentially you have, imagine it like you have a command block and it's running the commands. Of course, this is a function. And then what it's going to do is say, move one forward and do the same thing that you did over here, but one block forward. And so it'll do that and it'll do the commands and it'll tell itself, well, do the same thing that you did over here, but one block forward. And what this is, this is recursion. So you're doing something over and over and over the main difference that we will be doing is offsetting where it's being played by one block each time or half a block each time or some unit in the direction the player is facing. And that is how you achieve the ray casting line draw effect. Uh, there are a lot of little nuances to it that we'll get into. Now, obviously you need a way to stop it. The way it normally stops is if the function is being played, not in a loaded chunk, it will stop. So that's how it stops or if it gets played uh, outside of the world. So at a negative coordinate or above whatever the max, I think 384 now. So that's how it stops. But we're going to have a extra criteria, which is a scoreboard telling it to stop. So what we're going to do is we're going to set the scoreboard to whatever the range value is, subtract one each time in the recursion. And if it goes below zero or equal to zero, then stop. And that's what we're going to be doing. Uh, 
And so that basically gives us a limited range. We're also going to stop it when it encounters a block that we want it to stop at. And uh, we'll go through that next. But first, let's get it to stop with a scoreboard. So we're going to do execute anchored eyes, which brings the command up to the player's eyes. Then we're going to, uh, and I'm also going to add an add at s because we might not have had that before. Um, and then we're going to do run function gun shoot raycast loop. And then inside the loop, this is where we get the recursion happening. So we're going to make it call itself but positioned one block forward, okay? Then we're going to do particle mycelium right here, no spread and one mycelium, just so we can see what's happening. So it'll put one mycelium particle at each iteration. Then we're going to do scoreboard players remove dot ITT raycast one. And then we're going to add if score.itt raycast matches at least one. And that will mean that once this criteria is not passed, aka you drop below one, then it will not continue and run another iteration. So if we type slash reload and then pull the gun out, you can see it does the raycast, but it doesn't hit anything and it doesn't stop inside walls. So it just went through the wall. Uh, so we'll have to fix that. So let's get rid of the word raycast because we know it is actually shooting. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to change this to 0 0.5 because 0 0.5 is a little bit better. So we just want to reduce the chance that you step over a block while also keeping performance basis. And 0 0.5 is a pretty reasonable amount, but you can still clip blocks if you do 0 0.5. Uh, like if I come at the edge of the block and I go through, it will jump over the block because that's like less than 0 0.5 distance. <laughs> If you go at the right angle but that's okay so we'll change it to 0 0.5 and then we will also do a block check so if their score is true and now this is where the uh, place you put the block check matters for the behavior so if we want the thing to go one like half of a block into a block that's not air then we put the block check after this uh no we put the block check here which means that as long as you're currently in air, move forward. If we want it to stop before it hits the wall, we have to put it after the position movement to say uh, if it's going to hit something that's not air, stop. But I want it to go a little bit inside, so that's fine. So let's go if block here, hashtag gun colon air. And so this is a block tag, which we will have to make. So we're going to go into the Minecraft tags we're going to go into the gun tags and we're going to have to copy this, call it blocks and then copy this, rename it to air. And inside here, we're going to have air, obviously. So this is considered air is air, but there's a couple different kinds of air. So there's cave air. There's also void air. Um, and then you can add any blocks here that you want it to be able to go through, uh, but it's just Boolean. It doesn't partially go through them. It just 100% it will go through them. So now if I right click, it will stop. Uh, it will stop at this block. So let me go ahead and build a little wall so you can see. And let me shoot and you can see that it did not go through. It also is going to travel a smaller distance because when I change it to 20 and I change it to 0 0.5, then it will only travel 10 blocks instead of 20 blocks. So that's just something you're going to have to keep in mind. So I'm going to make it travel 20 blocks and change the range by changing the range to 40. And then let me go ahead and do function gun. Oh, the gun that I'm currently holding. Uh, sorry, uh, little thing. The gun I'm holding already has that, that MBT stat. So that's why it was still working. Uh, but let's go ahead and give ourselves the new one, which has 40 and it'll travel much further. So let's reload. And yeah, that travels quite a, quite far, but it obviously is going to stop at this block, which is kind of nice. Uh, so it stops at the block. It stops after the score reaches zero. And the only other thing to really touch up on here is some misconceptions that people have about the system. So a lot of times people will be like, why did you use ITT instead of at S? Well, this is something we've already discussed before in the data pack. But if you're just jumping to this point, um, essentially, since this function, uh, the function here called shoot at S is a singular player. And for that function, 
it comes from main player where at s is a singular player and that function comes from main that does at a what's going to happen is you can think of it like a tree so first at a is going to say go to every player but for every player it has to do everything on the branch like un unroll that unwrap that entire set of operations before you hit the next player so main player has to run for everybody everything in here has to run for each singular player by itself before anybody else happens so nobody else is going to have this set of commands run before uh you get it or the first player gets it and likewise inside the shoot nobody else will run it until some uh, you will be able to handle all the functions inside shoot by yourself like on its own before anybody else actually runs it and same with raycast so you can see this call here you can imagine it like unwrapping a set of commands right be right below this line that only occur for this player uh, as long as we don't change the context or use like at a so for that reason the we can use a fake player to store the value without having to worry about two people overwriting each other and that helps with efficiency because you can have less scoreboards you don't have to have a singular scoreboard for every single value you track um but anyways that's it for this one guys we're gonna get a little bit more complicated next time but anyways thanks for watching and i'll see you next time peace